go through automatically to the second round. Others in this field include Peter Ogilvie, the Canadian, in lane seven. Mark Sherwin from the Cook Islands in six. Shahana Chahuridi from Bangladesh in four. Ondiek, the Kenyan, in two. And Muyabi from Zimbabwe in one. And away first time, and as expected, it's uh, Linford Christie doing it easily. This is just a warm-up race, a good run coming from Ondiek, the Kenyan, as well. Linford Christie and Ondiek go into the line first and second. And Muyabi from Zimbabwe he gets there in third place. And just let's have a look at that time. 10.40, just outside the New Zealand all-comers record. They're running with the advantage of a toe win today, but that was easy for Linford Christie. He will run a lot faster than that before this event is over. Second heat of the men's 100 metres with the first five to go through to the second round with the New Zealander Mark Woods running in lane number two. He won the New Zealand championship trial here in November, but he's only the sixth fastest in this heat, so he's really going to have to move to get into the second round. This is Clinton Bufuku, but the big attraction here in lane number six, the world's number one sprinter in 1989, Ray Stewart of Jamaica, one of the few men in history that have gone under 10 seconds flat for the 100 metres. He's running in lane six. Woods is in two. The Australian Naylor is in three. Bufuka of Zambia in four. David Clark in Scotland in seven. And Liang from Hong Kong in lane number eight. And a good start there by Shane Naylor running in lane number three. Uh, Ray Stewart quickly into his work. And the fast-striding Jamaican doing it easily, just easing down to the line in 10.43 unofficially. Our first glimpse at the world's number one sprinter. This was the man that was ranked ahead of Carl Lewis in 1989. Ray Stewart of Jamaica, the favourite for the gold medal. And his clash with Linford Christie will be one of the highlights here at Mount Smart Stadium over the next week. Well, watch our man on the far side, Mark Woods from New Zealand. He doesn't start well, and again, he lost valuable hundreds of a second at that start. And you can see he's well back, first five qualified for the next round, remember. But Raymond Stewart from Jamaica in the familiar gold and black shorts, looking so well. Stewart wins it quite easily, and our man is going to get fifth place, and we'll go to the next round. So, Raymond Stewart, 10.43, just one hundredth of a second faster than Linford Christie in his heat. Don't pay too much attention to those times at this early stage of the competition. And Mark Woods has made it into the next round, but he might struggle to go further. Let's take a look now to heat five. And it's Bowden, Scott Bowden of New Zealand, running from lane four. We're running with the advantage of a very strong wind, which is gusting at around about three metres per second. And out very quickly is Tatengi, the Nigerian. Jackson giving chase, and Henderson coming down the outside. It's Tatengi, Jackson Henderson, and I think possibly fourth place going to Scott Bowden of New Zealand. So that's another New Zealander safely through to the second round, but a very impressive performance there from Tatengi. 10.29 under the New Zealand all-comers record, but it will be disallowed because of the strength of the wind. Well, this is the fastest time we've seen in the heat so far, but look at our New Zealander. He's got a very bad start in lane four, you can see, and that cost him a valuable seconds in this heat, but he's quick enough to make up pace now and get through comfortably into fourth place. Jamie Henderson on the outside here, getting into his gear very late also, but a very good run from Tatengi of Nigeria to win it. 10.29, but a tailwind. Well, in actual fact, the wind must have dropped just at the time that uh, race was run. Uh, the, the wind dropped under the uh, allowable two metres per second to 1.99. So uh, Brendan and John suggested it was about three. It dropped back to 1.99 metres per second. So that time of 10.29 does count as a new New Zealand all-comers record, breaking Alan Wells' uh, previous mark by just two hundredths of a second. The fastest time in the heats from Tatengi of Nigeria in the men's 100 metres. And that for the moment is our track and field action from Mount Smart. Yabi from Zimbabwe in five. This is Ray Stewart, favourite for the gold medal. 9.97, a very experienced sprinter. Even though he's only 24 years of age, he ran as a teenager in the 1984 Olympic final in LA, was also a finalist in Seoul in 1988. Other runners in the field are Abdullahi Tatengi from Nigeria, who set the New Zealand all-comers record in the first round this morning of 10.29. Wing Kong Leong from Hong Kong in seven. Peter Ogilvy from Canada in eight. 17 year old. And lane number nine is Edward Batoga from Botswana. Tatengi, Stewart, and Naylor, the fastest three in this field. The first four go through to the semi finals. And a good even start, and Stewart's showing out and coming through as Tatengi again. It's Ray Stewart, and Tatengi, the Nigerian, is going to get there just ahead of Stewart. And third place going to Muyabi from Zimbabwe. 
unofficial time of 10.39. And this very good form by the Nigerians continues. This is Abdullahi Tetengi, who ran 10.29, a legal time in the first round. Not quite as quick in this, the second round, 10 point who will run in lane number three, one of the three fastest in this field, the New Zealander Scott Bowden, who ran faster to the New Zealanders in the first round, will run in lane number one. He did 10.68 in the first round. Lyndall Hodge from the British Virgin Islands in two, Ondiek in three, John Regis, the Englishman in four, Osman Zinwa from Nigeria, the second half of the Nigerian twins in five, Masongi from Uganda in six, Enderson from Canada in eight, Elliot Bunny from Scotland, and completing the lineup in line number nine is Karim Street Thompson from the Cayman Islands. On the Ekin three, Regis in four, and Izinwa in five from Nigeria, the three fastest. And they caught the gun the first time, and a very good start coming here from Elliot Bunny, the Scotsman, in lane number eight. But now coming through is Kennedy on the Ek. Regis is there as well, as is Izinwa. It's on the Ek, Regis, Izinwa, one, two, and three. 10.30, smart time as the wind dies down a little here at Mount Smart Stadium and the Kenyan Kennedy Ondiek, the African record holder over both the one and the two through to the semi-finals. Winner of this particular heat, heat three in the second round of the men's 100 metres. Your four, Augustine Ngetzia from Ghana and Linford Christie, silver medalist and one of only seven men that have gone under 10 seconds at sea level. He's running in lane number six. Inside of him is Neil Silver in five, scratching in seven. Zizimides from Cyprus in eight and Wartovo from Papua New Guinea in lane number nine. Yeah. And away second time after a false start. Linford Christie at the 50 meter mark has already got two meters on this field. The New Zealander Mark Wood struggling down there in, in the lane two and coming through in second place is Neil De Silva. 10.19 for Linford Christie, starting to show some of the speed this man really does have. We'll have to wait for the wind reading because it's varying from race to race, but that may well be an all-comers record. We'll just have to wait for the official reading. But Linford Christie sounding a clarion call to the rest of the sprinters from the Commonwealth that he means business. Well, just in the 20-year-old Australian and two, Another very young man in Davidson Zinwa, only 18 years of age in three. Bruni Surin, the Canadian number one in four. Linford Christie in five. Tatengi, the Nigerian in six. De Silva in seven. Zinwa Osmond in eight. And John Regis in nine. And here he is, this formidable man. 29 years of age. Linford Christie, very flamboyant figure as well. We saw him here in the warm-up meeting last week with uh, a cutout naval uniform i guess you could describe it and there was a big track meeting in europe earlier this year when he pitched up and ran in a bow tie yes when he had that uniform with a big uh, hole cut in the front of it i wondered where he'd pin his uh, competition number here's the man who's carrying canada's hopes in this race in lane number four 22 year old bruni certain born in haiti and came into prominence just a few months ago at the canadian championship when he ran 10.14 Number 313, the 24-year-old Englishman, Marcus Adam, with the best time of 10.28 in lane number one. And a strong, gusty tail wind here. It was uh, gusting at over four metres per second for the women's final. This is John Regis, the world indoor champion over 200 metres. That's his specialist event, but he sneaked in here as the... Uh, the final of the men's 100 metres qualifier. lane one for England, Marcus Adam. And now the... Uh, field of nine starters being introduced to the crowd it's unusual to see a, a nine lane, two lane track Australia. being used at a major track and field meeting there he is just 20 years of age ran a personal best in the semi-finals today lane three representing nigeria davidson Azinwa. ran 10.19 in the semi-finals he's really come out of nowhere in the last two days is davidson Azinwa, along lane with his twin brother canada bruni surin Bruni Sirrett, who'll also compete in the long jump here at these Commonwealth Games. Well, at the moment, his attention is on the 100 metres. Lane five for England, Linford Christie. Seeking to become the first Englishman for 52 years to win the gold medal in this event at the Games, 29-year-old Linford Christie. Lane six for Nigeria, Abdullahi Tatengi. Just 20 years of age, Tatengi, who ran a PB of 10.22 in the semi-finals. Lane seven for Trinidad and Tobago, Neil De Silva. Another from the Caribbean in lane number seven with a best time of 10.20, Neil De Silva from Trinidad. Lane eight for Nigeria, Osmond Ezinwa. 
and the twin brother of Davidson is Inwa. Osman is Inwa running in lane number eight. And this time at 10.24. Lane nine for England, John Regis. And the third Englishman in this lineup, 23 year old John Regis. Well, Wendy Brown, I guess you can't go past this man, Linford Christie. No, I think he'll be well ahead of the others. Uh, I like Davidson at Zimba for second, and I think Tatingi for third. But Christie, he's got a. His start is. Uh, he comes up fairly quickly because he's a tall man and gets well underway very quickly. John Davies, some last minute thoughts? Well, can we see it under 10 seconds, as Peter Williams says? Good conditions for sprinting, and I can't find uh, a faster time than 9.97 for Limford Christie. That's his best time. He set that in Seoul in 1988 in lane number five. first time and a good even start Linford Christie not quite so prominent now he's starting to show up being chased all away by Sheeran but Linford Christie he's got this race in control Linford Christie gets there ahead of Davidson is in the hay look at this time 9.93 is it a legal time there's a very strong tail wind here he's gone under 10 seconds but I suspect the wind is over two meters per second the machine isn't showing a reading at the moment but nonetheless that's the best time he's ever run 3.83 is the win reading, so no record for Linford Christie. But goodness gracious me, the first time ever in New Zealand we've seen anyone go under 10 seconds. In fact, it's probably the first time in the Southern Hemisphere. Well, that's absolutely brilliant running, Linford Christie, so great. 9.9. Obviously going for a good time. He said he wanted one and he really did it. And a magnificent run also coming from the teenager, the 18-year-old Davidson is in with. He must have gone close to 10 seconds flat as well to take the silver medal and Bruni Siren the bronze. But here he is, Limpet Christie, a special moment for him, a special moment for his country. Not since 1938 has an Englishman won the gold medal in this, the Blue Ribbon event on the track. In fact, England haven't had much of a record at all in this event in recent years. Yeah, you've got to look at that Scotland's Alan Wells, I guess, if you're going to talk about what comes from that country in this event. But what a wonderful run. And this man, of course, is credited with so many good things in English athletics. He's known to be one of the men that is a strong team member. He helps the younger members of the English team and does a real good job in encouraging them and getting them settled into international competition. So he deserves a lot of credit, not only for his great performances on the track, but the great team man that he is for England and Great Britain. 29-year-old from the Thames Valley Harriers Club in London, Limpet Christie, silver medalist, remember, in Seoul in 1988. He also won the World Cup in 1989, the big track meeting in Barcelona in September. And now he's added the gold medal here at the Commonwealth Games to go with the silver he won in this event four years so here he is, the big man, huge. Look at the muscles in his shoulders. Look at his eyes. Look at the excitement. Look what he's about. He's about winning. He's about gold medals. He's about record. This man, Limpet Christie, look at his face. That's what it is. Determination. He's brilliant. And we must be proud that we saw this performance today. And look at the determination. <laughs> he came here to win the gold medal. And the large British contingent in the...